trying to get some of these mountains, man. It's just been so busy at this conference. I haven't had a chance to really, you know, see these mountains. That's kind of what I see driving in every morning. It's so cool. Um, I asked the late walk. Well, Take exit 275. You can see the snow. To Colorado. The snow on the tops of the mountains. It's so cool. It's been a great conference, so definitely, you know, in future, next time, I'll definitely come out here and climb them. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's a beautiful view driving Exit in. This session, this session is now concludes Q and A. But if the microphone on, can we take some questions? We're happy to take questions if anybody has any. Otherwise, as I mentioned, we'll be we'll be hanging around afterwards to um, further discuss anything people would like to come and talk to us about. Thank you very much for your time. Last question, who was 
the, uh, this is just a generally healthy uh, population. Yes. Uh, we took a class actually at my university. We used them as subjects. So they were college age, um, mainly sedentary, but healthy. Okay, so the last thing I want to thank you. The last thing I want to say as a personal trainer, I will tell you that uh, subjective is huge. Because when you're working with people in the gym, you don't have all these instrument instruments. So with a scale like this, you can ask a client, how do you feel? And you can get that feedback. And over time, you can kind of track. And you can probably do future studies in different modes. Like yeah, a treadmill, absolutely. elliptical, uh, different modes. So this is kind of, I think it opens up a whole new, uh, you know, I guess scope of study in terms of adherence. Because that's huge. You know, getting people to do it. That's really what's been kind of been talked about at this conference is, you know, here, it's getting people, because we're really at a point where a lot of people just don't exercise. And so, uh, this could be helpful. So. Alright you guys, so I'm here and this is a cool test, me being as a personal trainer, always looking for uh, ideas. This is a trunk control test, it's, just, it's, like a, it's like standing on one leg but it's really it's from a seated position. And so this was with, I'm here with Chelsea. Alright, so just kind of what you were saying in that the way the test is uh, kind of run is the arms across, the legs across. Eyes closed. Right, eyes closed was the cool part, but I thought the arms, well I said that with the arms crossed and legs crossed, it reduces the limbs to stabilize, which is which allows us to be a true um, test of core control and stability. So what were some of the, um, I guess, test parameters? Like you said that the board couldn't touch. Yep. And so if you look here, you can see if this, uh, the wobble board touches the side, that counts as an error. Uh, if their feet touch the ground, that counts as an error. If their arms or their feet come uncrossed, or if their eyes open, then we ask them to try and find their balance and immediately close them as soon as they can once they get balanced again. Okay. And then we do it for 30 seconds, and then we just count the number of errors. And you can use a stopwatch and then click the lap button yep. when you're using it on your iPhone, and then you can look down at the end and count the number that you got so that you don't have to take your eyes off of them um, during the entire 30 second test. Okay, and so um, what was what was the least amount of errors, I guess a cutoff point, that was it correlated with, um, you know, optimal uh, trunk control or cut uh, control with uh, well, zero. cutting maneuver? Oh, zero? Yeah. Of course. Yep. So anything higher than zero and we started to see some sort of uh, yep. so potential? we noticed that if it has more errors, then they would have more hip adduction. So maybe their hip is trying to compensate for their lack of trunk control okay. when they're performing the cutting test. You said hip AD? AD. Or AD. 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 Oh, yeah. Yep. Interesting. Very fascinating. Yep. Um, so this could have implications on injury prevention, too. Absolutely. For yeah. that reason. Um, he just suggested that we could use it as a training tool, possibly. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I love it. So is this test, did you guys uh, come up with this test, or was it out there and you guys have tested it? Um, no, so I just came into the lab this past year, and so it was just being developed, so we helped kind of put the finishing touches and the details. But it was developed at, at, at this at the university. University of Kentucky. Yep. University of Kentucky. Okay, yep. good. Do you know uh, Professor, I think it's Murak? Murk? Murdoch? I don't think Kevin so. Kevin Murdoch or Kevin oh. Murak? Uh, no, I'm uh, working with a the physical therapist. Okay. In the, uh, he's in the, um, he's done some talks on uh, concurrent training. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so like more like muscle physiology, exercise physiology kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, like All right, cool. It's good so far, so I'm hoping to yeah. see more good results in the future.
Well, yeah, and I might want to incorporate this with my clients. I was talking, making a makeshift test um, and just kind of using it there. Um, okay. Another question, this here, this surface, was that a hard surface or a soft yes, surface? Yes, that's like a step up. Okay, it's a hard surface. Yep, it is. Which kind of controls for the test because if the surface was like a cushion, that would like, yeah. that would introduce some sort of, you know, Absolutely. confounding variable. Be, yeah. You could use that so it has to be on a firm surface. Yeah. That's you yes. All right, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Right, yeah, no problem. But let me just show you the study right here. So this is adiposity parameters as a full mediation of the influence of muscular fitness in cardiometabolic risk clustering. So as you can see here, we got this correlation here where you have unfit and fit and fatness parameters. As you look here, unfit high fat, they have the highest cardiometabolic risk cluster. It goes straight down. Unfit low fat, so it's better to be fit regardless of your body fat status, okay? I mentioned this before in videos, but as you can see, when you start eating properly, nutrient dense way, have variety, um, and I think society needs to improve its diet, quite frankly. I think it makes it, it, makes it harder for people to do it the right way. But as you can see, this optimizes health, being fit and having a low body fat. Okay, when I mean low, I'm not talking about like 2% or 3%. I'm talking about within the normal range, like, you know, I don't know, 7, 6, or maybe as high as 15% or something, maybe 12%, whatever. The bottom line is this data kind of confirms a lot of the things that I've been addressing in my videos. So their conclusion here is participants with best profiles, so being fit and having a low body fat were associated with lower levels of metabolic clustering. Okay? So, there it is. Alright, so we're here, and this title is very, very provocative, and uh, I'm here with your... Martin Morris. Nice to meet you, it's a pleasure. Coventry University. Okay. Uh, University of Coventry in, Coventry University, in, yeah. in Kentucky. Yeah. Um, can we talk you through? Uh, yeah, can you tell me what you found and what you yeah. were testing for? Yeah, yeah. So we were looking at trying to lots of research around high intensity exercise, especially from a physiological adaptation. We wanted to look at it in terms of how much of the improvements you see maybe in performance from high intensity training is from the ability to, to suffer and to, to tolerate that suffering. Yeah. So what we did, we um, we did a, uh, for our measure of pain, we did a tourniquet test, which was a blood pressure cuff around the upper arm. So uh -huh. we wanted to test the muscle that wasn't going to be utilized in the training protocol. because We wanted to see whether it was the central predictions of pain and the change and not due to any metabolic or structural changes within the muscle. Coupled that with the changes in the pain tolerance, there was uh, a significant improvement in the amount of time that uh, the high intensity group could tolerate the painful, and that was significant from pre-training and between there was no change in the, in the control group. And this seemed to link in well with the changes in performance we're seeing with their ability to suffer in the tourniquet test. Okay. Alright you guys, so I just came from a Whole Foods. I had a uh, double green smoothie, I think it was like spinach, kale, banana and um, I forget the rest of the ingredients but you know it's pretty cool how the Whole Foods out here in uh, Denver they make smoothies um, this is what I got for on the plane I got these tamarind Brussels sprouts which on my Utah video I got those so I'm gonna put the card for that and here's an apple with some walnuts let me show you the surrounding area here it's kinda cool just so I can remember it the Whole Foods is right here it's small it kinda doesn't even look like a Whole Foods when you look at it from there but it's definitely a Whole Foods, see? So, anyway, this is the area. It's a beautiful day out here in Denver. So, I'm getting ready to leave. I'm gonna go to the uh, airport and, uh, well, actually, I gotta return this rental car and then, uh, you know, we'll be back home. So, anyhow, thank you guys for coming along. Um, Thank you for, for those of you who have who, uh, sponsored me and helped me for this conference. Um, obviously, as courtesy, you get to see this video first. And um, also, you, there's some incentives as well. Uh, so thank you for that. And um, thank you all for watching my video. Uh, hopefully, you uh, learned.
learn some things. I'm definitely, I've learned a lot and I'm still going to go back and probably reread a lot of the notes that I took. But uh, certainly it was a fantastic experience. And it's always kind of a, you know, when good things come to an end, it's always a little bit of a, I don't know, it's like a, it's like you got to come back down, I guess, to reality because it was like, it was like up here, you know, like during a conference with just, just meeting and greeting people and just, it was fun. And then I met Sarah, who, uh, she's a really nice person, uh, had a really good time, actually off camera just because I just, it was just fun, you know, it's just, you can't record everything. So me and her, we walked down, um, it's 16th street. It's like, um, it's like, you know, it's like a mall. It's like basically no cars can go through except like buses. And, uh, we ate at this place called mad greens and, um, you know, we just walked up and down. We actually initially wanted to go to this place called the protein bar, but they were, um, closed. And so, um, we were just walking and, uh, it was nice, you know, it kind of, it's kind of like a, a popular downtown Denver spot. And uh, I'm glad that she, uh, you know, invited me and and I and it was fun to do it you know it was fun to see it and so um, anyhow uh, that's all guys that's all for for now and uh, thank you guys for watching so this is what I mean when I say a beautiful day in Denver look at that look at the clouds look at the sky it's just amazing beautiful sunshine I mean this is awesome it rained it rained a little yesterday um, when we were uh, walking down 16th Street, not didn't rain. While we the main were reason I like the uh, the weather is because I just realized it's it's the it's the low humidity. It's the low humidity. It's such a different it's such a difference, you know, than than in uh, you know down South Louisiana and in, in that area. It's the humidity is just it's like it's like on top of you. You sweat. Here I can have the windows down. It's I don't I don't even need to use AC. That's pretty amazing. And I would imagine it's probably in the high 70s, maybe low 80s. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous day. That low humidity just feels so good. Especially on a day like this, so cool.